Brand, we as marketing. What's the difference? What's the difference? There's so much confusion out there regarding brand and marketing. And from my experience, people don't seem to know the difference. And when I'm saying people, I'm also talking about CEO, CFO, CMO, and all those three letter titles. Even marketing professionals and agencies that I work with. There seems to be a lot of confusion in the whole industry. No wonder when you have marketing experts on YouTube and diverse platforms telling you branding is your logo, name, and design element. That can for sure be part of your brand but it's more to it, as we will cover in a minute. We often think of brands as companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, McDonald's, Visa, Tencent, Louis Vuitton, MasterCard, and Coca-Cola. I'm not gonna confuse you. All of them are amazing brands. Except Tencent, that is, because Tencent does everything. To be fair, the 10 most valuable brands in 2023. And I'm not seeing the big four ones disappear in the near future. When I talk about this, I often get the question, which one of the companies do you think will outlast the other? I will reveal my answer and my thoughts about that a little later. But what do you think? Comment your opinion below. They're gonna love this video. Later years, I've grown to be a huge fan of Mr. B. If you don't know who that is, you better open your eyes. He is the perfect example to use in this video, as he is one of the biggest brands I can think of. And he is a personal brand. Think of the companies I mentioned earlier. It's more than likely that you heard about Steve Jobs, Sergey Brin, Larry Page, Bill Gates, and Jeff Bezos. They are all super famous and they all have their personal brand and are closely tied to their company. So why would I mention Mr. Beast? Of all the people I just mentioned, I think Mr. Beast's personal brand is the only one that is strong enough to open 300 restaurants in one single day. And with marketing applied to his brand, sell out of hamburgers the first day. You see, every video he puts out to our big old World Wide Web is a marketing video, but he is the brand. When you look at his commercials, they are all so well articulated that it's almost impossible not to enjoy them. Many people don't even understand how well articulated this marketing is. Let's use an example where he managed to use the first 10 seconds of a video as a marketing ad and at the same time hook you into the video. This is a one billion dollar super yacht and it's big enough to hold an entire city on the water. How do humans build this stuff? And I'm gonna show you the difference between this. Whoa, that's a crazy intro. Not only is he using the first 10 seconds to promote a product, then later in the video promotes the product for a full two minutes and 57 seconds. And the viewer, yes, the viewer is just thinking what an amazing video it is. This is totally mental. Imagine being able to promote one single product for three minutes to now, 307 million viewers and they all think it's amazing that guy knows a thing or two about content marketing the video i'm talking about an ad for the royal caribbean cruise ship harmony of the seas and when we do a small analysis of royal caribbean's traffic you can see that most of their traffic from social media is from youtube search data is a bit difficult to measure in a good way as you can see there are increases in the traffic when the video launched in june 23. search data is complex when you have this much data and COVID changed search data for a lot of industries and especially for the cruise industry as the whole cruise industry shut down for a period in 2020. Now the big question, is this branding or marketing for Royal Caribbean? Well, the answer is it's both. Now I'm going to use the sentence that I've probably heard the most times in the marketing community. Well, they got their logo exposed to 307 million people, so it better be darn good branding. Well, of course, getting your logo exposed is fine and all, and it's good to be exposed in many different places or touch points, as we professionals call it. There's a big debate regarding the human attention span and if it decreases or not. Either way, it's uploaded a lot of content many places. We humans get attacked from brands from many different angles and we get a lot of different impulses. So you need to expose your company more times and more places than what you needed before for people to remember you. So what is my take on the branding benefits for Royal Caribbean? To not only do one but two Mr. Beast videos. A short disclaimer before we continue in this video. As you should never underestimate your audience and I know a lot of you guys are way smarter than me. I know I'm saying that the Mr. Beast video is exposed to 307 million people, which is actually not correct as it shows views and exposures. While the most expensive Super Bowl commercial of $16.5 million has the potential to reach 110 million people that get exposed to the same ad once, so it's still 110 million exposures. My point there is that I don't have access to know how many people Mr. Beast reached in each video, but based on common YouTube data, I would say that it's safe to say that he reached well above 200 million people with this video. The cost for Royal Caribbean to use Mr. Beast is insane. I don't know how much Mr. Beast charged for one video, but I know he tries to get his 
this client to pay per CPM. CPM means cost per mil, and mil means thousand in Latin, French, and Italian. So it's the industry standard for explaining how much a commercial will cost for 1,000 views. I don't find much reliable data online for how much it would cost for an advertiser to do ads on a Mr. Beast video, as he belonged to a secret club of YouTubers that only the top 10% of advertisers are allowed to advertise on. So he also get much higher CPM prices. The most reliable I can find is between eight and ten dollars. So for Royal Caribbean that is not sponsoring the video with a YouTube ad, but actually collaborating with Mr. Beast to create content about them, I would assume at least double the ad cost. An estimate would be at least twenty dollars for every thousand views. This would give a cost for Royal Caribbean of around six million one hundred and forty thousand dollars. In reality, the ad is worth much more, as a Super Bowl commercial lasting for only thirty seconds cost over seven million dollars and only reaches 110 million people. Super Bowl is looked upon as the holy grail of commercials, but only reaches one third of the people that you reach with Mr. Beast, and you get a lot less exposure time. As I said, this is just rough estimates. Mr. Beast might be charging much more, but let's look further into the cost. All of which we have to ourselves. Have fun, boys. Yeah! Well, it's that one. Mr. Beast and his crew was alone on the Harmony of the Seas. I don't know for how many days, but let's say one to be modest. The average cruise tourist of Royal Caribbean spent $1,629, and the average length of a cruise is seven days. So they would pay $232 for one day of cruising. And for what I could find on Royal Caribbean's blog, the occupancy rate is 102%. So I am confident when I'm calculating 6,687 guests. The one day cost to not have the cruise filled with guests would be a little over 1.5 million dollars. So we can say that the commercial would be around 7.5 million dollars. We can easily say that the marketing director in Royal Caribbean has both a good standing in the company, but more importantly, Cara Vallis is really good at her job. Genius! What the? So why is this a better commercial than Super Bowl and how does it affect the brand? Because a brand is a feeling. And every company of magnitude and every personal brand of magnitude has millions of micro brands in existence. If the brand has no history with you and no association with you whatsoever, you would most likely not even notice their logo. Let's say you recently got debt collected on a parking ticket that you are super angry about because you did everything in your lawful right. So there is no way you are going to pay that ticket. So when you are at the shopping mall and you see that debt collection agency logo on a billboard, it would not trigger any good feelings inside of you, would it? But here's the thing. Mr. Beast have millions of super fans, the fans that would do everything that he says. Let's say three millions of his subscribers are super fans. If thousands of those super fans would have a bad experience with Royal Caribbean before, they would most likely like Royal Caribbean a little better after that video. Because if Mr. Beast is a fan of them, why shouldn't they be? Of course, Mr. Beast is also at the risk of losing some fans in this scenario. But the reward outweighs the risk, as Royal Caribbean is no debt collection agency, but a cruise giant many people has good associations to. But what about the other hundreds of millions of people? Well, Mr. Beast is one of the most liked YouTubers out there. And no wonder, I'm a pretty skeptical guy, but even I have bought into the fact that he is a genuinely good person that really wants to help people, because he could use his video to do bad stuff, as many YouTubers actually do. But he is doing good stuff for the planet poverty and all kinds of stuff over at Beast Philanthropy. If I had a company big enough to run Mr. Beast commercials, I would jump on it right away. Because I could quickly start generating a feeling towards my company. And with amazing branding, your goal is to control what people feel when they see your brand. In other words, the brand is a feeling a person have when he or she sees your logo, name, color palettes or patterns. While branding is you trying to manage what those feelings should be. To manage feelings, you have to promise something to your customers. And you have to keep that promise in every decision, every customer interaction, like marketing activities, product and customer service. But wouldn't that make the Mr. Beast video marketing? Yes, it does. But the marketing aligns closely with the brand statement. There's also a chance that Mr. Beast has so loyal fans that they would instantly be loyal to Royal Caribbean. While branding, branding is all about loyalty. The long-term results is loyalty and gives higher value for each client. While marketing is about the short-term results. I'm not going super advanced into marketing tactics in this video, as this video is about brand vs marketing. In the video description, there are affiliate 
affiliate links to product commercialized in the video. Mr. Beast would of course get his revenue from this as well. The first affiliate link in the video description is to Feastables, his own chocolate brand, which is also mentioned several times during the video and had the most epic launch commercial where he built Willy Wonka's chocolate factory and got 285 million views on a 16 minute long commercial for his chocolate brand. The affiliate links used are bit.ly links and they help you track where users are coming from. This way you can measure the effects of YouTube videos, traffic, sales and conversions that are happening outside of YouTube and you can measure it pretty accurately. The next affiliate link is the brand new ship from Royal Caribbean, Icon of the Seas, which is very similar to Harmony of the Seas. And then you have an affiliate link to Harmony of the Seas. Out of the 307 million people that saw the video, many of them have clicked on those links. That's one of the reasons why I was shocked to see that Royal Caribbean are sending the traffic to a 404 page after they renewed their landing page of Icon of the Seas. They should use a redirect link so they don't fall into the trap of sending users to a page that doesn't exist. And of course, all the people who are clicking Royal Caribbean's links will get into Royal Caribbean's marketing lists and with the information of where they came from. In my opinion, Royal Caribbean should use this information to build a funnel out of this video, as this video would be all the way on top of their marketing funnel, the awareness stage. So they could use this intro from Mr. Beast's video in their Facebook ads and just twist a little bit on it. It's important to act a little stupid in this case so that the user don't feel too monitored or stalked in other words. So even though you can show an ad to a person with 100% accuracy, you should tone your message down a little bit. And for El Caribbean, it could be something like this. Have you seen the Mr. Beast video? One dollar vs one billion dollar yacht. The one billion dollar yacht featured in the film is our cruise, Harmony of the Seas. Book a ticket now for the full Mr. Beast experience. This is marketing. In other words, branding is the what and the why while marketing is the how, when and where. So let's say someone creates a social post and they say it's created for branding. Let me say this, that doesn't exist. Every single social post, every single ad or every single collaborator should take brand into account. We can of course say it's branding for the ease of explaining it to the client, but isn't part of what we are doing trying to increase the knowledge to our clients. And in reality, this is content marketing created to get loyal followers who wants to purchase your products. But that social post is still marketing and branding at the same time. The brand is what your company is about and why it is about that. If Royal Caribbean brand statement was the same as the Ocean Conservancy, which have the brand statement, envision a world where the ocean are teeming with life, free from pollution and protected for the future generations. It would make no sense to have cruise ships as your main product, would it? If Royal Caribbean aims to provide its guests with unique and memorable cruise experiences while ensuring their safety and the safety of their employees and the environment, which is actually Royal Caribbean's brand statement, well, then they have to align their marketing with their brand statement. And the brand statement gives them a lot of room to do cool stuff and get their company into the masses. It is also possible to run a cruise ship company and care about the environment at the same time. That's why Royal Caribbean has taken huge leaps into improving the sustainability in its products and improving the products with the focus on the brand statement. Well, that's branding because they manage the meaning of the brand. But when they make a landing page, promote it in ads and tell their customers about it, it's marketing. The marketing is the strategy and the tactic put in place to promote their branding efforts. Does it make sense? But you said that the Mr. Beast commercial was branding. No, I said it was both. Because all commercials is taking brand into consideration and the commercials that they are running or the influencers that they are using has to align with their brand. Imagine if Mr. Beast was the opposite of what he is, getting 300 million views by punching strangers in the face. How would that impact Royal Caribbean's brand? So the 10 companies, which one will live the longest? First off, it's almost impossible to project, especially with brands like Coca-Cola and Louis Vuitton. But of the tech companies, I believe that Apple will live the longest as Apple is luxury. Or as marketing professor Scott Galloway says it, rather the sleek gadget is a status symbol that says, if you mate with me, your kids are more likely to survive than if you carry an Android phone. With that, I wish you good luck with your brand and marketing efforts.